Hello, I'm Hank, and you're watching me play Kerbal Space Program 2. As of this recording, we're playing on 0.1.1.0. Uh, there hasn't been another patch yet, but it should be right around the corner. Now, uh, regarding this upcoming patch, I don't have the highest expectations. There were 300 some odd fixes in the last one, which is a great improvement, but it's still like 300... As far as the bugs go in this game, that's that's a small portion. There's still so many more. I know developers, you're working around the clock trying to make this game as good as possible. It's very clear from the first update. You've got a great plan ahead of you to get this thing stable before adding a whole bunch of new stuff that's going to break it in the future. I appreciate all the hard work. I'm just saying I don't think the next patch or two or three is going to fully fix all the issues that we're running into right now, but we're still playable, having a good time for the most part, not a whole lot of frustrations. <laughs> well, actually, depending on how you play the game. If you play the game normally and don't build things to ridiculous proportions, you should have a pretty playable experience right now, you know, provided you have good enough hardware and all the other things, like read your specs before you buy the game still. So definitely playable for messing around and stuff, but it's still got a long ways to go before we get to that point where the game is, you know, playable for everybody. So without further ado, in today's video, I'm going to showcase a little bit of my construction process. As you can see here, it's going pretty well so far, it's moving across the land at uh, pretty nice speeds for a worm. Now I'll take this time to point out right now that even though the time is sped up down there on the right, I am cheating a tiny little bit. So this game has a tendency, if you have a lot of parts, opening up the parts manager takes a really long time. So I've cut out, there's a few parts where the manager literally, even at the 25 times speed, it's five to 10 seconds of just still waiting time. So yes, in this video, there are edits in addition to the speed ups that you'll see down in the corner to give you, again, a general sense of how this game plays at the moment. It's gonna be smoother and a lot faster in the future, but just imagine all this 25 times or whatever slower. Now on that note, that is uh, one of my several excuses for getting beat to Duna with this exact same idea of have putting a sandworm on it. Uh, so the user who beat me to it, his name is Coriolis, posted some excellent screenshots in the KSP Discord server. I asked his permission, uh, he let me put them up right here, I'm going to show him to you. Look at that beautiful, beautiful worm. <laughs> the fact that he was able to get that sucker onto Duna's surface without it exploding into a million pieces. Like, my gosh, just look at that detail. All those panels, they're pretty heavy panels. The mouth is what gets me, I love that mouth. Tim, no, you gotta walk without rhythm. Anyways, congratulations to Coriolis. Beat me to Duna with a way better looking worm. If you wanna show him some love, go on over to the Discord channel and look up some of his art. Show him some love and get him on the highlight reels. So now we're back in the VAB and you can see I'm getting ready to launch this sucker, get a couple of tests going. Now uh, the patch did seem to fix a couple of the issues with symmetry, but a lot of them are still there. Like my struts sometimes will just decide to go the wrong way on a three times symmetry. One of them will work fine, the other two will just cross over each other. So if there's anything in the middle, those paths are going to attach and your craft's going to be lopsided because one's going to be heavier. You get the idea. I went with the uh, Jodorowsky's, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, paint scheme for the vessel because, you know, why not? It had the checkerboards on there and everything. I really like the look of that bug launcher craft, whatever it was going to be in his version of the movie. Now, what you're about to witness on the screen here, probably witnessing right now, is my least favorite bug so far in this entire game. Now what this bug does is when you go back to the VAB after a launch or something like that, your craft will be buried into the ground. And not only will it be buried, it will also have all of its parts detached from each other and register as individual crafts themselves. So nothing will be attached and everything will be underground where you can't select most of it. So I've gone ahead and sped us up even more and get us through that build again before we test. I make sure I have multiple save files this time because this bug does follow you back in time through save files, through game restarts, all the works. Once the bug is there, it is there. Now trying to battle this bug, <laughs> you can see I just made a whole new campaign, copied some files over in my uh, 
user folder. And unfortunately, the bug persisted through a new campaign as well, just loading up the craft file save. So unfortunately, I did get pretty lucky this time as far as this bug goes, because I was able to save the worm portion of the craft. It's just the lower part I've got to rebuild for the third time now. But the harder portion of it is still remains built, so that's not the worst thing to happen. But you can see where this, some rage quit moments in this game definitely happen. So let's just speed that back up and get through the tedious process of rebuilding my lower stages once again. I'll mention this now, when you're loading up a lot of Kerbals at a time, it is much faster to empty the Kerbal Space Center, close the Kerbal Manager, and just open the Kerbal Manager again. Because as it fills up one at a time, it's loading all the details from the Kerbins and stuff, and I find it's just way faster to just close it and open again than sit there and waiting for it. All right, obviously I needed to strut up and uh, reinforce the top section a little bit. So I'll just add a couple more parts and then we'll uh, head on out to Duna. At this point, I'm about 80% sure that that really bad bug is triggered by the ground supports. So I'm just gonna try to avoid them for the most part until a couple more patches come out. Looking like a very stable launch so far. I'm very confident we've got enough fuel to get to Duna. I just eyeballed it, but I'm I'm confident in my abilities. Just gonna come down to whether the Kraken wants to strike at me before I get there. Maybe just a few more struts, then we'll be ready for Duna. And maybe just a little more paint. Okay, so now we're successfully in space. Pretty nice orbit here. So we can go ahead and speed up time, match up an approximate uh, window to intercept Duna. Thankfully, these uh, pods that the Kerbals are in and the chairs on top have enough food and life support to last them infinite amount of time. As you can see, I've gone ahead and jumped to back up to 50 times speed for the duration of the space part of this voyage, because I'm not the greatest at nav ball directions anyways, and they're not any easier in this game without having this precision navigation tool like the old KSP had. So it's very finicky, and like I would say 50% the game and 50% me just not being super skilled at it. But I'm good enough that after a couple of eyeball attempts, I managed to get myself into a stable Duna orbit in order to be in landing the worm in the desert.
Yeah, I uh, kind of forgot the game was running. All right, and I'm going to bump us back to 25 times speed and begin our descent. This worm takes a very long time to turn around. I think in the future they need to adjust how effective the uh, gyroscope-based controls are, because I've got large ones. Every second section of the worm has one in it, and it's still so long to turn around. And of course, because of that, with such a large vessel, it makes landing that much harder, trying to even line up higher orbits to do a counter burn and get yourself nice and vertical. Now, once I lose the weight of the orbital part of the vessel, definitely straightens out quite a bit like they're doing their job on that guy but not having a fun time turning those big uh, hydrogen tanks and I will fall into a nice straight descent here fall in a little quickly and um, might be an appropriate time to point out I haven't been to Duna in a while and I may have undershot the amount of parachutes I need to slow myself down properly. And in my excitement, I also forgot to save during the landing. Slow the video down to 10 times speed so you can get the full experience. My amazing landing skills. And a textbook a docking if I ever saw one. This time if I just slow myself down a lot before I get down there and do a bunch of saves, hopefully I'll be able to just land and drive around. Can go really slow. we're in space. So I'll let you just learn my lesson the hard way for another minute or two here. Let that beautiful Duna soundtrack do its job. Okay, so now that I've learned my lesson, I'll head back to the assembly building, hit the speed up button, let's try this all again.
Hello, I'm Hank, and you're watching me play Kerbal Space Program 2. As of this recording, we're playing on 0.1.1.0. Uh, there hasn't been another patch yet, but it should be right around the corner. Wow, check out my voice. How about I just serenade us all the way to Duna? Duna, Duna, time is near. Time for worms and time for fears. These are cold and they can't last. Hurry, Duna, hurry fast. Want to carry all that swoops? Me, I want a new still suit. We can hardly stand the wait. Please, Duna, don't be late. And we're back to Duna. Try this whole landing thing again with two to three times the parachutes. I don't remember, you saw it. Starting our hopefully final descent towards Duna. Though I fear that might not be the case. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. I will face my fear. I will permit it to pass over me and through me. And when it has gone past, I will turn the inner eye to see its path. Where the fear has gone, there will be nothing. Only I will remain. Where the dunes began, perhaps 50 meters away, at the foot of a rock beach, a silver-gray curve broached from the desert, sending rivers of sand and dust cascading all around. It lifted higher, resolved into a giant, questing mouth. It was a round, black hole with edges glistening in the moonlight. The mouth snaked towards the narrow crack where Paul and Jessica huddled. Cinnamon yelled in their nostrils, moonlight flashed from the crystal teeth. Back and forth, the great mouth wove. Paul stilled his breathing. Jessica crouched, staring. It took intense concentration of her Bene Gesserit training to put down the primal terrors, subduing a race memory fear that threatened to fill her mind. Paul felt a kind of elation. In some recent instant, he had crossed a time barrier into more unknown territory. He could sense the darkness ahead. Nothing revealed to his inner eye. It was as though some step he had taken plunged into a well, or into the trough of a wave where the future was invisible. The landscape had undergone a profound shifting. Instead of frightening him, the sensation of time darkness forced a hyper-acceleration of his other senses. He found himself registering every available aspect of the thing that lifted from the sand there seeking him. His mouth was some 80 meters in diameter, crystal teeth with the curved shape of Chris knives glinting around the rim. The bellows, breath of cinnamon, subtle aldehydes, acids. The worm blotted out the moonlight as it brushed the rocks above them. A shower of small stones and sand cascaded into the narrow hiding place. Paul crowded his mother farther back. Cinnamon. The smell of it flooded across him. What has the worm to do with Spice Melange? He asked himself. And then he remembered Liat Keynes, betraying a veiled reference to some association between worm and spice. Well, I think that's going to wrap up my activities on Duna today. I hope everyone has enjoyed the video so far and uh, continue to enjoy my work in the future. I'm going to try to stick to a weekly-ish schedule for my videos in the future coming out. As much as I would love to just play this game and edit videos all day, I do have to work to uh, keep a roof over my head in the meantime. But uh, any subscriptions, I know you've heard the scheme before, any subscriptions or likes and everything helps. Every little bit helps. At this point, I'm not even close to making any money from YouTube, so this is all just done for fun. I would love to be able to do it for a living one day, but uh, it's one step at a time, one little click. You could be the one that pushes me over the edge to want to do this for a living. But if you like what you saw here today, please consider hitting that button. I don't ask that you watch everything. I just ask for that one little extra bit. It'll go a long way to help me grow my channel and encouraging me to make more of these fun videos. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I have been Hank. This has been Kerbal Space Program 2.